Let's go! It's time for Maths with Mr. Thomas. With chapter 14, lesson number 5. Integrating sine x and cos x. Now you'll remember a few lessons ago we were differentiating both sine x and cos x. And if you differentiate sine x, you get cos x. And if you differentiate cos x, you get negative sine x. What we're going to do now is we're going to reverse this process and we're going to integrate both sine x and cos x. So, integrating cos x, well you can see up here if you differentiate sine x, you get cos x, which means if you integrate cos x, we just get back to sine x. Remember though, you've got a plus c whenever you integrate. If you differentiate cos x, you get negative sine x. So if we integrate negative sine x, we would get cos x, which means if we integrate positive sine x, what do you think we'd get? Brilliant, negative cos x plus c. I used this little diagram to help. Sometimes it helps at the corner of your page just to write out sine cos, negative sine, negative cos, or sc, negative s, negative c. If you differentiate, you go down the way. So differentiating sine x gives us cos x, cos will give us negative sine, negative sine gives us negative cos, negative cos gives us back, takes us back to sine. So you differentiate, you go down. If you integrate, well, you're going up the way. So d for down and i, i up. Uh, you're going up the way. So if you integrate sine, then you're going up the way. So you're going back down here. So you'd have negative cos. Integrate negative cos, you get negative sine. Integrate negative sine, you get cos. Integrate cos, you get sine. And as I just said, sine, you're back to negative cos. So integrate, you go up the way. Differentiate, you go down the way. Bearing that in mind then, let's try a few examples. So example one, integrate five cos x. Well, you know, the five will just stay as it is. And integrating cos x, so we've got sine cos, negative sine, negative cos. Integrate cos, well that takes us back to sine. So we'd have five sine x plus c. Example two, integrate two sine x, take away cos x with respect to x. So, first thing we want to do is we're going to be integrating the 2 sine x. So the 2 will stay as it is, but if we integrate sine, you're going up the way, so we're going back down to the bottom here, and we'd have negative cos. So instead of 2 sine x, well, you integrate that, and you'd have negative 2 cos x. If you integrate negative cos, so take away cos x, the same as negative cos x. So if you integrate negative cos x, you get negative sine x. And don't forget the plus c. Example three, integrate cos x between pi and pi over two. So for this one, well, first thing you want to do, we can just integrate cos x. So sine cos, negative sine, negative cos, integrate, you go up. So if we integrate cos x, we get sine x, but we've got these limits, so big square brackets, and we'd have pi and pi over two. You know the way you work it with the limits, you're going to be substituting in the top values, we'd have sine pi, and then you're taking away what you get when you sub in the bottom value. So we'd have sine of pi over two. So sine pi minus sine of pi over two. For that, pi is going to be 180 degrees. Pi over two then, 180 divided by two is 90. So sine of 180 is zero. We're taking away the sine of 90. Sine of 90 is one. So we'd really have zero take away one and zero take away one is negative one. And that will be our answer. Example four. Integrate sine x between pi over 3 and pi over 6. So the first thing you want to do is you're wanting to think, right, well, integrating sine x, so you've got sine cos, negative sine, negative cos, integrate sine x, and we've got negative cos x. So in big square brackets, we've got negative cos x, and we've got pi over 3 and pi over 6. From here, you know you're substituting in those values, so we've got negative cos of pi over 3, and then take away, and then negative cos pi over 6. From here, the two negatives will become a positive, so instead of taking away negative, it will become add. And also, it's sometimes best thinking about what these would be in terms of degrees. So pi is 180, 180 divided by 3 is 60, 180 divided by 6 is 30, so we'd have negative cos 60, that would become plus cos 30. From here, use your exact value triangles, make sure you remember these. Look at these, woo! And you can work out cos 60 and cos 30. Cos of 60 adjacent over hypotenuse is a half, so it's negative a half, plus, and the cos of 30 is root 3 over 2. 
So we'd have negative a half plus root three over two. The denominator is the same, so we're just adding the numerators. So we'd really end up with negative one plus root three. Some people though would prefer to write the positive term first of all. So instead of writing negative one add root three, you could write your root three, take away one. As long as the one is negative and the root three is a positive. So our final answer will be ne uh, root three, take away one over two, or negative one plus root three over two. Example five, calculate the shaded area. So this is the area between two curves. If you're unsure about this example, you may wish to look back to this lesson, lesson 9.5 in my videos. Uh, it's the area between two curves. You may wish to look at that if this does not make that much sense to you. So working out the area between two curves, you know you're going to have the top curve minus bottom curve. Here you can see the shaded area. On the top, we've got this y equals root three cos x. And on the bottom, well, that's sine x. So you're going to be integrating between zero. You can see that this area starts at zero and it ends at pi over three. So we're integrating between zero and pi over three. And we've got top curve minus bottom curve. So root three cos x minus sine x. From there, well, we can integrate. We're going to have our big square brackets. We've got our zero and our pi over three. Integrating at root three cos x, well, cos if you integrate it, sine cos, negative sine, negative cos. Start at cos, you're going up the way, so integrate cos and you get sine. So we'd have root three sine x. We've got our takeaway cos x, or ne, sorry, takeaway sine x, or really negative sine x. If you integrate negative sine, you get cos. So we'd have plus cos x. And again, you've got that pi over three and zero. From there, sub in those values, so we'd have root three sine pi over three plus cos pi over three. And we're taking away what you get when you sub zero in here in place of x. From there then, well, sine of pi over three, use the exact value triangles, think about what that would be in terms of degrees, pi over three, 180 divided by three is 60, sine of 60 is gonna be root three over two. So we'd have root three times root three over two. Add cos of pi over three is gonna be cos 60, again, use the exact value triangles, and that would be a half. We're taking away root three times sine zero, which is just going to be zero. And we're taking away cos of zero. Cos of zero is gonna be one, so we're taking away one. From there, you could tidy that up slightly. Root three times root three over two. Well, imagine root three is root three over one. So root three times root three is root nine. Root nine is three. One times two is two, so that just becomes a three over two. We're still adding in a half. Get rid of that zero, and we've got that takeaway one. So three over two is the same as one and a half. If we add a half, that will give us two. Take away one, and we end up with one. And because it's asking us for the shaded area, we know we're going to have squared units just on the end. Example six, sketch the graph of y equals cos x on the interval between zero and two pi. Then find the area between the curve, y equals cos x, and the x-axis uh, from x equals zero to x equals three pi over two. So for this one, I'm hoping that you would be okay with sketching your cos graph. That is something we have been doing for a while. If you sketch it, you will end up with something like this. So your cos graph will go between one and negative one, and we're wanting it between zero and two pi, which is 360 degrees. So that's just our basic cos graph. That is what it'll look like. We are wanting to find the area between the curve, y equals cos x, what we just drew, and the x axis between zero and three pi over two. So it's from the very start up to here, three pi over two, the 270 degrees. So we're looking for these areas here. We're looking for this area, wherever it's in A2, and we're looking for this area as well, wherever it's in A1. So to do that, well, we're going to have to split the graph into two parts, this part above and then part below the x-axis. Again, if you're unsure, maybe look back to that chapter nine. I'll do a few more examples with this. So area one, well, we've got cos x and we're wanting this area between zero and pi over two. For the second area, again, we've got cos x, but we're wanting to find out the value between uh, three pi over two and pi over two. So work out both areas separately. So we're wanting to integrate cos x. So we've got sine cos, negative sine, negative cos. If we integrate cos, we get sine. So big square brackets, we've got sine x between pi over two and zero. Subbing in these values then, we've got sine pi over two, take away sine of zero. Sine of pi over two, so the sine of 90 is going to be one. 
sine of zero is just going to be zero. One take away zero will give you one. Maybe best to go to the side and draw the sine graph so you can know what that will be. Working at the second area where we know we're integrating between 3 pi over 2 and pi over 2, and that's cos x. Once again, integrate cos x. We just did it there, but if you've got sine cos, negative sine, negative cos, integrate cos, you get back to sine. So we're integrating sine x between 3 pi over 2 and pi over 2. Subbing so in the values then, so sine 3 pi over 2 minus sine of pi over 2. That will give us 3 pi over 2 is 270 degrees. Sine of pi over 2 is sine of 90 degrees. Use the sine graph to work out what those values would be, but you'd end up with negative 1 and 1. So this becomes negative 1, take away 1, which will give us negative 2. From there then, we have both areas. How, Sahana, would we go about working out the total area? What would you do? Sahana, you're a genius. You would add them both together. So the total area will be area 1 plus area 2. So we'd have 1 plus negative 2, is that right, Sahana? Perfect, yes. There is no negative. You don't get a negative area. So if you do get a negative for your answer, ignore the negative and the area for this section will just be 2. So the total area will be 1 plus 2, which is obviously 3. And because it's area, we're going to write down our squared units. And that is your answer. Try some of these questions. You're integrating sine x and cos x. It's in the Heinemann Higher Book this time, page 274. It starts there, and it's exercise 14c. Good luck. Let me know how it goes. Bye.